Good morning, my friends. It is Thursday, August 17th. I'm Dana Corsello, and so happy to be back with you. So happy to be back, even in this heat. Let me begin with these opening words. We are called in the morning to turn our hearts to you. We are called in the morning to turn our hearts to you. Let us pray. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting, O oh God, that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. That is a beautiful prayer. And I just want to point out, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting in God. <clears throat> beautiful prayer. Now, the scripture I want to share with you this morning is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at the fifth verse. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at the fifth verse. <clears throat> okay, so I had my summer vacation back in July, and as many of you know, you've heard me talk about this before, my family, my husband and I, we own this tiny little stone cabin uh, in Chalk Creek Canyon, which is in between two little towns you may not have heard of, Buena Vista and Salida. It's gorgeous. And our cabin is around 9,000 feet. Um, and so every other day, I would hike up this back road to this ghost town called St. Elmo. And it would take me about an hour and 10 minutes, and it, I would ascend 1,000 feet. It's a really great workout, but it's my happy place and where I think and where I prayed. I probably never prayed so much, not only for my arrival, because it was, you know, by the time I would get there, it would be a little hot, but, um, but pray for all of you, pray for my friends and family and things going on in the world and the cathedral. Um, but one day, I noticed this aspen tree. And you know, aspen trees have like communal roots. This, they have just this incredible root system that connects all of them. Well, I notice, and they just, they're, they're straight, as an, straight as an arrow, straight up. Tall, skinny, gray, whitish trees with those gorgeous, you know, crinkling leaves that make those wonderful sounds in the fall. Anyway, I love them. Um, anyway, but there was this little aspen tree that somehow or another came up right underneath a giant pine tree, a really big tree. And I'd never noticed it before. But anyway, this aspen tree literally came up like this, and you could see that it was searching for the light 
And so completely bent, I mean like crazy bent, and then it kind of, you know, went up, bent out, out of the shade of this giant pine tree, and then kind of up towards the sky. So we know living things need light, photosynthesis, all of that to survive. And my colleagues in the video department, um, I believe they're showing you pictures of this aspen tree right now. But as I noticed this tree and started thinking about it, I thought, oh my gosh. One, I thought of the bent woman. Uh, I think she's based in the Gospel of Luke. Um, I love that. She'd been bent over for 18 years. Um, and then I thought of this piece of scripture, let your light shine out of darkness. And then, but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. And you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, wow, this tree needed light and God gave it the power it needed. I mean, just crazy bent, like crazy way to grow, to survive, like survive. And then I'm thinking, verse eight, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. And that made me think of this tree. And then I started thinking about myself and what we're to learn in community and with one another when, when pain does strike us, when we are um, afflicted, when, you know, when we do have to like make a pretzel out of ourselves to survive. I don't necessarily mean our integrity, but I'm just saying the strength. You ha we have to do whatever it takes sometimes to make it in this world, but it's not on our power, it's on God's power. We have to contort ourselves, not our faith, not our beliefs, our integrity, not what we know is right from wrong, but to contort ourselves to reach the light, to contort ourselves to be well, right? It may, and it may take years. Um, we don't have a perfectly straight path up or horizontal. No, this path may be bent, this path may be curved, this path, you know, it's a struggle for the light. But seeing that tree, every time I would walk past it, I just felt hopeful, like, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how life is, life is hard. And sometimes you have to do everything you can to survive and reach the light. God is with us. God, I looked at that tree and thought, now, that's, there it is. That's life, that's faith. It doesn't have a straight line. It's not always perfect, but you're going to make it. We're going to make it. Because that tree, the way the very end of it was just like, I made it. I'm, you know, reaching the light. See me, God. So I loved that. I took a picture because I knew I wanted to share it with you because it gave me, um, such strength and hope. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. And I think the life of God was made uh, mortal in the bark of that aspen tree. Amen. So let us continue with our prayers this morning. <clears throat> As we begin our day, give us your peace. As we pause this morning, give us your peace. As we do the work you've given us to do, give us your peace. For all places of need in this world, give us your peace. In trusting you, O oh God, to care for your children, give us your peace. As we seek wholeness, give us your peace. And now, my friends, what is it who is it that we need to pray for this um, during these dog days of August? As we reflect on your presence, let us be a peace for others. Let us be a peace for others. 
And now will you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy One, we are often too blinded by trivial matters. Lord, may our attention be diverted now from these things, and may we become as little children, trusting and seeking with love to cross the bridges that we have not crossed in the past. Amen. And my friends, may God bless you. May God give you the strength to struggle to find the light. May God, may you, may you be comfortable in your own skin and your own bodies as you bend and contort and uh, reach for God's loving mercy, care, and light. And we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.